One of the core ideas of molecular and structural biology is that biological processes can be better understood through the study of the molecules that drive these processes. Proteins in particular are studied because they are the molecular machines that do most of the work inside our cells. Only by folding into precise three-dimensional structures can proteins interact with each other in the specific ways that enables them to perform their functions. Conversely, in some circumstances, incorrect protein folding can disrupt cellular functions and lead to disease. Here, at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, scientists are using these concepts of structural and molecular biology to tackle major problems in human health and disease. One area of research aims at a molecular understanding of Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases and involves a collaborative effort between neuroscientists and structural biologists. Abnormal protein structures are present in most neurodegenerative disease, like plaques and tangles in Alzheimer's disease, and Lewy bodies and neurites in Parkinson's disease. In this disease, the nerve cells in the brain lose function over time, leading to symptoms like decline of memory and impairment of movement. We have been studying the protein tau, which is normally found in healthy brains, but forms abnormal structures in multiple diseases, such as tangles in Alzheimer's disease. Over 30 years ago, exciting developments happened at the LMB. First, we identified tau protein as a major component of the neurofibrillary lesions and paired helical filaments of Alzheimer's disease. Secondly, we identified the molecular characteristics of tau in adult human brain. And thirdly, and this was all happening in parallel, Tony Crowther identified that the tau filaments of Alzheimer's disease brain are made of two identical C-shaped protofilaments. One of our aims has always been to determine the high-resolution structures of tau filaments from human brain to better understand disease. Unfortunately, this was not possible until recently because new methods were needed first. Historically, protein structures have most often been solved using a technique called X-ray crystallography that was developed in the 1950s, but not all protein structures can be determined in this way. More recently, scientists at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology have been at the forefront of development of a new structural biology technique called electron cryomicroscopy, or cryoEM, which allows structure determination at a high resolution for many more proteins. CryoEM starts when you rapidly freeze a purified protein sample into liquid ethane, and then you put this frozen sample inside an electron microscope where you shoot electrons at it and you record an image on a uh, detector. Then the work in our group focuses on development of computer programs to combine these images recorded in the electron microscope to make a three-dimensional reconstruction of protein structures. I remember vividly one afternoon over tea in the canteen with uh, Michel and Tony that Tony showed us um, pictures that he'd taken years earlier of uh, tau filaments that he had extracted from the brain of an Alzheimer patient. And these pictures, they were very beautiful with very fine details. And the timing was fortuitous because Xiao Da He, a student in my group, had just implemented new computer programs to deal with these kind of samples. So we decided on the spot to collaborate and try and solve these structures. So then Ben Falcon from Michelle's group uh, extracted tau filaments from the brain of an Alzheimer patient and Anthony Fitzpatrick in my group imaged these uh, filaments on an in an electron microscope and together we managed to solve their atomic structures. Tau filaments from Alzheimer disease patients look like twisted ladders where each rung is made of two tau molecules folded into C shape arranged back to back. 
Our structures show the precise arrangement of atoms within each round of tau filament ladder, helping us better understanding these abnormal structures. This work demonstrated the possibility to study other neurodegenerative diseases where proteins accumulate abnormally using samples taken directly from patients. With these new techniques, we set out to determine the structures of tau filaments in other neurodegenerative diseases to understand if and how they differ. To date, we have revealed the structures of tau filaments in four diseases. These are Alzheimer's disease, the frontal temporal dementia Pix disease, chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is a disease associated with repetitive head trauma, and the movement and dementia disorder, cortical basal degeneration. We found that in these four diseases, there are different tau filament structures. One of the ways in which this is achieved is by combining certain substructures in different ways. Importantly, patients with the same disease have the same tau filament structures. This suggests that there's an intimate relationship between the precise structure that tau forms and the associated disease. We also found that the tau filaments in two of these diseases contain additional molecules hidden within them. And we now think that these molecules themselves determine which tau filament structure forms and then which disease the patient goes on to develop. The most important benefit to emerge from this new work is the possibility to develop specific ligands for early diagnosis of tau proteinopathies. In the longer run, we would also like to understand the mechanisms that underlie the surprising diversity of tau filament structures found in human brain. With a better understanding at the molecular level of how tau forms these filaments, and which other molecules may play a role in this too, we may even be able to develop therapeutics that prevent or even reverse tau filament formation.